the Naked DJs podcast. Are they really naked? We know they expose themselves every day just so they can bring you the best of music. They like to stick it out there for everyone to hear. You can hear their podcast on Anchor.fm, YouTube, and any of your favorite podcast platforms. Welcome to the Living the Dream podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. 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 Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by best-selling author, blogger, podcaster, and the founder of SideHustleNation.com, Nick Loper. So we are going to be talking about how you can make money as a side hustle and how you can kind of supplement your income or take it in any direction you want. So Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. You bet. Living the dream. Thanks so much uh, for the invite. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? About me? Well, first and foremost, a uh, husband and a father to two uh, young and energetic uh, boys. They're five and three that occupy a lot of the uh, time and brain capacity these days. Um, apart from that, for the last eight and a half years, I've been hosting the Side Hustle Show, which is exploring uh, weekly uh, part-time business ideas, creative ways to make extra money, uh, largely through an interview format, trying to deconstruct, okay, what worked for somebody else and uh, and share those uh, tips and tactics and strategies with the world through uh, the podcast. Um, prior to that, my uh, original side hustle, the vehicle that let me uh, quit my quit corporate, <laughs> quit the day job was a um, comparison shopping site for footwear. So I've been in the uh, online world for uh, probably 15, 16 years at this point. It feels like, uh, it feels like it's gone by pretty quick. Um, but that's, uh, that's me in a nutshell. Well, kind of tell everybody what made you want to even get into side hustle or, or how did you get into what you're doing now? Yeah. So I kind of naively thought that the shoe business could be my thing. Like I could just be the, be the guy who sells shoes on the internet, but like a lot of businesses, it had a, a finite lifespan. And so I was really grateful to have started uh, a handful of other projects on the side from that after I you know quit the uh, corporate job and was, and was running that full time, started a bunch of other projects, which for full disclosure, most of them didn't go anywhere. They died a quiet death in some dark corner of the internet. Um, but a couple did have some staying power. And one of those was the Side Hustle Nation blog and the Side Hustle Show podcast. And really what that stemmed from was um, kind of a lot of the you know typical side hustle starter questions that I'll turn around and ask audience members today, which would be, well, you know, what do you never get tired about talking about? What lights you up? What are other people coming to you for advice for? And for me, the, you know, people were already asking me, well, hey, how were you able to quit your job? You're able to stay at home and work and make money. How does that work? Um, and I found I really enjoyed uh, deconstructing business ideas and like figuring out where does the money come from? Where do the customers come from? Wait a minute. How did you, uh, uh, how did you get any traction for that again? That's always been fascinating to me. So, um, and, and still is today. So that's kind of the, uh, the origin for the, for the blog and podcast as we know it today. Well, talk about why you believe side hustles are so prevalent in today's society. Oh my goodness. Uh, a couple of reasons, you know, one is the, um, you know, the positive proactive side, like, look, you know, we have more opportunity before us than ever before. Um, there, you know, it's really never been more affordable to start a business. You know, there's all sorts of opportunity there. Um, and that's kind of the, the proactive side, like, Hey, I've got, maybe I've got a decent job. I, just want to use my free time more effectively, more productively, exercise, you know, a creative side of my brain that maybe I don't get to do at work. Um, and there's people approaching it from that side. There's another driving factor, and that's people approaching it from the reactive side, looking at the, you know, 
just in terms of the big three expenses, um, you know, housing, healthcare, and education, like have skyrocketed over the last generation and a half. And real wages, while they have crept up a little, have definitely not kept pace with just the plain old cost of living. And so you have people approaching it from that side, like I need to make extra money to make rent, to feed my family, to um, just be able to afford this, this life that we all live. Um, and I think both methods, uh, you know, both approaches can work. It just kind of your goals may, your goals and your timeline may differ on uh, which path you uh, pursue. Talk about some of the more popular side hustles today that you know of. Oh my goodness. There is, so I guess I'll, I'll peel it back one layer and say that, you know, a side hustle idea or a business idea generally comes from, uh, solving a pain, like making someone else's pain go away. Cause that's like, that's what I spend money on in my life. I don't know about you. Um, it's either, you know, uh, seeking pleasure or avoiding pain. And I think it's probably easier, uh, to sell pain pills in, in a lot of ways, but to, um, and it's a one way to come up with business ideas is just to put on your uh, pessimist hat for, for a week and, uh, keep a notes app on your phone. I call it my what sucks list. And, um, just everything that, you know, that bothers you, that annoys you, that pisses you off, or that other people complain to you about, like put it down in this what sucks uh, app or what sucks note, just because on the other side of those complaints, problems, challenges, hurdles, there might be a business idea. There might be a way to, uh, to turn a profit, making those pains go away for people. And how you solve that pain um, usually takes one of three forms, either a product, a service, or, you know, content, like information, right? Um, if we look at uh, keeping your house clean as a pain, like a dirty house is a common pain point. And so there are on the product side, there's cleaning products that you can buy like Swiffer mops and fancy vacuums and all that stuff. Um, you can buy services. You can buy, hire a maid service, hire a cleaning service to come over and clean your house, make that problem go away. Or you could go on YouTube, Netflix and watch, you know, Marie Kondo, how to declutter your house and, you know, how to organize your closet and all that stuff. So uh, all three of those businesses are tackling the same pain or problem, but they're doing it in, in three different ways. Am I making sense there? You're making perfect sense. Okay. So most popular side hustles for beginners would be on the service and product side um, versus the, the information or the content side. Now I love the content side because it, you know, it scales fairly easily. Like I produce a podcast, you know, it takes the same effort to produce a podcast that 10 people listen to or 10,000 people listen to. It's like a really cool kind of one-to-many broadcast medium that is doable with service, but it takes probably more management skills uh, than I've got. Um, and it's doable with products, but it requires a ton of upfront capital in most cases in, in inventory investment and all that depth. Um, so I like the audience building side, this online content-based side where you can monetize with uh, affiliate partnerships, with advertising, or with your own products and services. You got some uh, flexibility down the road there. But the drawback is it usually takes uh, some speculative investment in terms of your own time to create that content, market it, build up that audience to the point where you can ultimately uh, monetize and monetize in a way that would be uh, meaningful to you in terms of income. So where most people start and most side hustle show guests have started is on the service side. Stick your flag in the sand and say, Hey, I'm Nick. I am available for hire. I have, am skilled in these areas. I can make these problems go away. And uh, that's whether that's, you know, cutting grass, painting houses, which was, you know, what I started doing in college, um, or it's, you know, doing book cover design, book editing, which is something that I did a few years ago, um, you know, gutter cleaning, lawn mowing, pet waste removal. We've had people doing mobile car detailing. We've had people doing house cleaning, graphic design, uh, freelance writing, um, but it's this you know service based business. I will uh, I will make this pain or problem go away for somebody by either selling my own time or playing matchmaker to a qualified service provider, and uh, and taking a, a middleman fee or an agency fee on that. What separates those who are successful at side hustles and those who are not? The biggest thing that I see. Uh, separating the successful side hustlers and the and the folks who are just kind of perpetually stuck on the side hustle sidelines is this willingness to take the first step, not necessarily knowing steps two through 10. 
And I'm the person who, who totally gets that. Like, I want to I wanna have this all mapped out. I kind of want to have this plan in place before I get started. But what we found over and over again is that it's this willingness to try something, not necessarily knowing the outcome, recognizing that choosing what's next doesn't mean choosing what's forever. And also recognizing that as long as I keep my downsides low, as long as I keep my risk low, I can position that in my head as an experiment in the failure, uh, the inevitable failures that come along the way aren't going to be life-threatening. Yeah, they're going to suck. They're not going to be fun. And it's, you know, it's never fun to have any sort of failure, public or private, but as long as you keep your, you manage your downside risk and position these, uh, position these swings such that your, your upside is high enough, it really just becomes a matter of time until you find something that hits. Well, let's talk about the necessary skills for the beginning entrepreneurs out there. What are the necessary skills that you feel that they must have in order to be successful? My answer on this has evolved over time. Like if you asked me this 10 years ago, I would have said sales. You know, nothing happens until somebody sells something. Uh, go out, <laughs> go cold call, uh, you know, go make a deal, right? Uh, if you asked me this five years ago, I would have told you, creativity. Before you ever sell something, you got to create the thing. You got to have some idea that you put out into the world. And now that you're asking me this today, I say the most important skill is the skill of learning new skills. And I was really, I think, fortunate to have had a pretty solid education growing up. And looking back, all the stuff you learned in high school, pretty worthless in terms of the actual content of those lessons. But it was that skill of learning how to learn, of, of learning new skills, because as an entrepreneur, every day there's these new challenges, new hurdles, um, and it's figuring out, okay, well, well, what next? Or how do I how do I get past that? And there's there's a video. I've, I've, it's from uh, Brian Harris, who runs a site called Growth Tools, and I forget the name of it, but it's like, you know, how do I figure that out? Or figure it out is the name of this video. So I think it's on YouTube if you go look it out. And that's like your job as the entrepreneur: figure out the next thing. And this is something you know, I was up a little bit later than I probably wanted to last night, trying to figure it out because some one of the software tools that I use, it was like making some changes and it was like this big logical, uh, you know, mental gymnastics. Like, well, okay, if, if this system talks to this system and then this happens as a result and it was like, oh, okay. But, you know, that's, that's your job as the business owner to try and figure it out. Speaking of figuring it out, let's talk about some of the, common mistakes and misconceptions that people have and make when it comes to side hustles? Well, let's do it. So common mistakes. One thing that stresses me out in, in terms of common mistakes, we already talked about kind of like this, uh, you know, analysis paralysis, like, I, I just don't know which idea to move forward with. Truthfully, it doesn't matter. Like picking something is better than picking up, picking nothing. Cause I think you'll find that the, uh, you know, opportunities become visible once you're already in motion. So like an example of that from my personal life was uh, in my personal business experience was I was working on this wine related site, which I have no business creating anything about wine. I don't care about wine other than, you know, occasionally we'll have a glass. Um, so this site had no reason to exist, but in the research for that, I came across a site that was reviewing wine clubs uh, as an affiliate. Like, okay, I'll, if you, somebody signs up for this wine club, they'll earn a commission. I was like, oh, that's a pretty interesting model. What else could I review? And so I pivoted that to make a review site for uh, virtual assistant companies, outsourcing companies, which have been a personal pain point of mine. Remember on the other side of pain points are potential business ideas. Like, why, you know, I, I need to hire some help, but I don't want them coming over to my kitchen table. Like what other options are out there? Which of these companies are legit? So I built the directory for that and ran that for almost 10 years before selling it. Uh, about this time last year, but I'm thinking of other uh, mistakes. One thing that makes me really nervous is, uh, you know, people who have so much uh, time and money invested in uh, in a business idea before they have any validation. It's, you know, I'll, this is several years ago, but somebody sent me a note like, um, you know, I've, I've got 30 grand into this website development. Um, and it's supposed to launch next month or something. It's like, well, do you, do you have any customers? Like, it was just like, it was really stressful for me. It's like, there are really lean ways to get proof of concept. 
and going back to like the product service idea things like, well, you know, could you pre-sell your product? Could you pre-sell your service? Could you say, well, there's other people already creating content in this niche and I'm just going to pivot it slightly. And I get, I'm confident they'll pay attention to me because they're already paying attention to this other stuff. So uh, those would be the two, the two big things, like just trying to figure out uh, how to validate things upfront or minimize your, minimize your risk. Well, let's talk about people who are wanting to start an online business. What advice or tips would you give them about finding customers and marketing for their online business? So I think uh, online business, we're talking like content-based businesses, you know, blog, podcast, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, right? Uh, Whatever your platform of choice is, your task is really to climb the um, you know, content consumer ladder, so to speak. You picture a, a pyramid where it's kind of stacked up from strangers to, you know, listeners, readers, viewers, you know, whatever your platform is there. Um, listeners, mostly in my case, um, as the second tier. Tier three is subscribers. These are people who, you know, are on your email list. They pay attention to the stuff that you're putting out on a consistent basis. And then at the top of the pyramid, you have fans. These are the people that buy everything that you sell. These are the people that, you know, spread the word about you. They tell all their friends, like, you got to pay attention to this guy. This is, uh, this is good stuff. He'll, he'll improve your life in some meaningful way. Um, and so for every piece of content that you create, you're thinking, okay, how does this uh, ascend someone up this pyramid? How does this help someone climb this ladder? The challenge is, you know, at the base of the pyramid, the biggest part of the pyramid is this awareness problem. Nobody knows you exist. And so I spent a lot of time on the, the awareness uh, piece of things, you know, search engine optimization, uh, you know, borrowing other people's audiences in the forms of, you know, podcast swaps, email swaps, uh, podcast guesting, um, you, you know, YouTube channel collaborations, um, social media marketing, Pinterest marketing, like all of this type of stuff where you can uh, try and just solve this awareness problem. Like, I, you know, if, if only people knew I existed, like I would be off to the races. So that's kind of the first step. Um, and then converting them uh, as soon as you can and as soon as is realistic into a community that you own. Um, and, uh, and by community, that's usually going to be an email list. I guess it's not necessarily community, but uh, into some asset that you have a little more control over than Google, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, right? You're like one algorithm change away from, you know, not being able to reach your audience anymore. So for me, that's been, you know, creating, you know, content specific lead magnets, like in terms of the podcast, hey, you just listened to this episode on um, renting out, hot, renting out portable hot tubs as a side hustle, for example, um, you're driving in your car, you're walking the dog, you're at the gym, you're not in a good place to take notes. Um, don't worry, we, we wrote those down all for you on um, at the website. And by the way, you can opt in and I'll send you, you know, 25 other unconventional things that you can rent out for a profit, like trying to create these little complementary resources that if somebody is tuned in, somebody's interested in this other thing, they might also be interested in. So that's how I built my email list uh, over the years. And then from, so that's from, uh, you know, listeners to subscribers in my case, and then fans, this is going to depend on your niche, but fandom for me, usually that's what usually flips when someone has taken action on an idea they heard on the show and put it into practice, tried it out in their own life, seen some positive results, then they're hooked. Then they're like, oh, this is, this is real. And that's, that's when they got to spread the word. Yep. You're either one algorithm or one shutdown away from not being noticed on those Facebook platforms like that. Speaking of content, you are also a best-selling author and award-winning blogger. So kind of go through your books, give a brief description of what listeners can expect when they read it and tell them what to purchase it and also talk about your blog. You bet. The latest book project is 1K 100 Ways, 100 Ways to Make a Thousand Bucks in Your Spare Time. That's at 1K100Ways.com. This is featuring 100 different stories from the Side Hustle Nation community on how they're getting it done. It's broken into local services, freelancing, online business, e-commerce, and just was a way to showcase some cool creative ideas and the people who are taking action in the community 
I also have um, buy buttons, which is a list. Again, it's getting a little bit dated. This is from 2016, but this is a list of you know platforms essentially where you can uh, put your buy buttons up for sale on the internet. Like, well, how, how are you going to make it easy for people to do business with you? Go where the cash is already flowing is kind of the thesis uh, of that one. But those are probably the two best sellers. I have one called The Side Hustle, which is completely free on Kindle uh, if you're in the US. And that is, um, it kind of breaks down the three business models that we talk about, product, service, and content uh, in a little more detail with some examples from, uh, from Side Hustle Show guests on those. So kind of go a, a little deeper into that concept of the buy buttons and go where the cash is so people can get a clear understanding of that and check into that if they'd like to. Yeah, so I think there are kind of, I'll call them like mini search engines, right? How can you shrink the internet to make it easier for people to find you in a lot of ways? I remember going to college orientation and it was like at the University of Washington, there's like, you know, undergrad enrollment, 30,000 people. And you're like, oh man coming from a high school graduating class of 270 something like that seems really intimidating. And the orientation leader was like, well, yeah, but you got to find ways to shrink the university, you know, whether that's your uh, intramural sports or your, you know, interest group or your fraternity or your other little interest clubs, like, okay, there's ways to shrink this uh, experience down. And I think the same rule applies online. So if you are looking for freelance services, right. You can go on platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, which are which are still super broad. And so, if you have a specific skill set uh, underneath that umbrella, and if you're kind of like, for, well, what service could I offer? Like, both of those have like really in depth navigation menus. I think on Upwork, it's called like uh, Hire or high, like there's a tab called like Find Work or something. And I, anyways, there's like hundreds and hundreds of different categories where it's like, okay, if this platform has a dedicated landing page for this skill there must be some demand for it. So um, going out and either setting up shop on one of these platforms where, you know, make it easy for potential customers to find you because the reason they're on those platforms to begin with is they don't have a dedicated person. They don't have their go-to person for this skill or to solve this problem. And that's why they're looking for you. Um, in the world of, you know, online education, it might be a platform like Udemy, like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, online course platform. We've seen people, you know, sell products on eBay, on Amazon, on, um, you know, even on like OfferUp, you know, some of these different apps, just trying to like shrink the global universe in a way that that makes sense, you know, for graphic design, we've seen people set up shop on Design Crowd, 99designs, Zazzle, um, print on demand shops like Redbubble, just a bunch of different ways, like versus trying to, trying to build your own website, you know, in that dark corner of the internet where nobody knows you, it's like having a having a uh, hot dog stand on the you know the middle of the desert highway. It's like well, there's not a lot not a lot of traffic passing by, so it makes more sense to set up on you know a busy corner right outside of the football stadium where people are you know, coming and going all the time. Tell us about your podcast. I know you kind of mentioned it throughout the show, but tell us the name of it, what it's about, and how people can listen to it. Sure, the Side Hustle Show is available in all the podcast apps. It covers creative part-time business ideas that uh, that you can start based on the uh, inspiration from uh, from over 400 guests at this point. There is a greatest hits playlist uh, on Spotify, which I think if you search "side hustle show," it should pop up there. Um, but that's that's kind of the uh, that's like my baby. Like I love uh, talking to these people figuring out what works, what didn't work, uh, what surprises they saw along the way, what mistakes they made, um, how they got their first customers. I love all that stuff. And that's kind of what we tend to, to focus on. Well, go ahead and throw out your full contact information, your websites, your social media links. How can people connect with you and learn more about side hustles? Um, the best place to find me is sidehustlenation.com. If you hit up sidehustlenation.com slash ideas, that's where you'll find my uh, constantly updated laundry list of, of part-time business ideas that you can start today. There's no opt-in required over there. So my hope is that goes uh, a, little, a little way to get the creative juices flowing for you. Like see what is, uh, what is available in the realm of possibility. Other than that, uh, most active social media is probably through the Side Hustle Nation Facebook group, sidehustlenation.com slash FB 
we'll get you over there. We're you know closing in, I think, on 45,000 members strong. So there's a lot of uh, really good uh, questions and answers and, um, and support going on over there for people building extra income streams. So guys, definitely make sure you go sign up if you're looking for some side hustles. You got any final thoughts before we close it out? I mean, the biggest thing for me is this, you know, experimenter's mindset, like being willing to test something out. Had I not been uh, willing to do that from a very early age, I think, uh, I think the, the path would have looked a lot different. And um, I'm really, really grateful for some, some early, I guess, mentorship or a nudge in that direction, because um, that's made all the difference. Ladies and gentlemen, SideHustleNation.com. Please be sure to follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible so we can get a lot of side hustlers out there. And Android listeners, go to the Google Play Store and download the Living the Dream with Curveball podcast app. Nick Loper, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.